Okay, this is Dragonov Journey, and welcome to World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth Pre-Patch. Now, in the last episode, the last two episodes, I talked about the dungeon journal. I took a look at the dungeons, and the bosses and loot inside them. And in this episode, I guess I'll be taking a look at the raid section, since I never got around to that. Yeah. Hopefully. Hmm. I thought there would be something here. I've been hearing complaints about people still seeing green in the eyes. Ah, oh, well. So, let's see. I have got the raid section of the adventure guide to go. So, I guess I'll talk about the world bosses first. Azeroth! While many of the greatest threats to peace in Azeroth are locked away in ancient vaults, or perched atop soaring fortresses, others walk brazenly beneath the open sky. As self-preservation drives the wise to seek shelter from these terrors, glory awaits any brave heroes who wish to test their mettle against the most powerful of foes. Okay. So there's a few things to look at. There's about uh, seven. Okay. So let's see Tizane. Animated by the powerful voodoo of the nearby necropolis. Tizane. Stalks the swamps of Nazmir in search of more souls to consume. Over the course of the encounter, the Zan will unleash the tormented spirits trapped within him to create avoidable effects. Avoid standing in front of the Zan during Terror Whale. Move away from allies when affected by consuming spirits. Avoid touching Goalest Essence. And he is a giant wooden beast person. Wait, if he's a Jorst, what's he doing in Nazmir? That's confusing. Unless there's a connection. Maybe. And anything you loot or you drop for me, maybe. You drop an Azerite helmet. Petrified mask of the afterlife. <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> okay. You drop a wist and you drop a waist. A wrist and a waist. God, it, it, I, I hate seeing the uh, legendaries being overpowered like that. It's just... Ugh. I know there's a previous expansion content, but still. Ugh. I don't know. Anyway, next is Jirak. 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 This mighty pterodax has a roost high up in the mountains of Zildazar, where the air is too thin for most lungs to draw breath, and life struggles to take hold. Occasionally, she descends upon the swamps below, in search of heartier meals to bring back to her brood. So, by killing her, we essentially starve her children. That's a grim thought now, ain't it? Giarak uses her massive wings to assault her foes of wind, drawing enemies in and pushing them away. Hurricane Crash inflicts lethal damage to all targets caught in the center. Lethal. How lethal is lethal? 78,000. And Clutch can be interrupted by crowd control effects. So you're a Teradax, and you're a Broodling. Okay. And you drop for me. You drop a back piece. You drop a chest piece. My dog's yelping for some reason. Yeah, hey buddy, you having a bad dream? So anyway, you drop an Azerite uh, chest piece. And you drop feet. So I'm going to be wanting to farm these world bosses. Fun times. So let's see, Hailstone Construct. Built by the original inhabitants of Justvar, the Hailstone Construct was built to defend these lands from any invaders. However, years of dormancy have left it addled, and now it sees all residents as threats, vowing to destroy them all. The Hailstone Construct uses a variety of uh, attacks to chill its enemies, and from inflicting frost damage in its melee swings to massive AoE attacks that both slow and freeze anyone hit. Use cover created by Permafrost Spike to avoid being hit by Freezing Tempest. And move to avoid Glacial Breath. So I believe you were showing off in the trailer for Balfazaroth. 
Yeah, the hailstone construct. And let's see, in terms of loot, you drop for me a Azerite shoulder, a regular hand piece, and a regular waist piece. Let's see, Lion's Roar, I'll tell you what, I'll save Lion's Roar for a bit later. Let's see, Azervos the Winged Typhoon. Azervos, the terror of the Kulturan skies. Oh, wait. No, never mind. I was going to say, were these like uh, uh, Zilda's only ones? But no, he's in uh, Kulturas. Anyway, Azervos, the terror of the Kulturan skies. Marshals the power of wind to force enemies out of its roost, causes water spouts and capsized ships. He has earned his reputation as one of the deadliest beasts in Kulturas. Ashavos attacks the party with the power of the wind, in an attempt to force them off out of its roost. Move away from the boss when he begins casting Ashavos' fury to make dodging tornadoes easier. Ashavos will move to a random player when casting Gale Force. Be sure you are not standing in front of him when it goes off, or you risk being knocked off the mountain. Where are we fighting him? Huh. Oh god, my stomach's been rumbling. Come on, I don't have long... Let's see, Warbringer Yenaj. Also, what does Ashavos give me? So you're a reskinned Pandaran Phoenix. You give me wrist. You give me legs. And you give me a trinket with a use on effect. Great. So let's see, Warbringer Yenaj. You're an old god minion. Dark Whispers shroud Stormsong Valley as rumors of eldritch creatures spread throughout the countryside and families mark their doors with runes from the local scribes. Often dismissed as exaggerations, sometimes housewives' tales fall f far short of the true horrors that lurk in the realm beyond our sight. Warbringer Yenage periodically calls down reality terrors and draws players into the center of endless abyss. Avoid reality terror as they impact the ground. Quickly move away from Warbringer Yenage when he casts Endless Abyss. Void Nova inflicts heavy, unavoidable damage. Whoa, you're creepy! You've got giant crab claws. Damn, that's. That's horrific! Uh huh. Let's see what you give me. You give me hands, finger, and a mastery trinket with a strength proc. Okay. Dune Gorgic Kraulok. Revered by all trolls, uh, but the Zandalari especially. Oh, revered by all trolls, but the Zandalari especially revere them. The bones of the giant reptiles of Zandalari are not. are dot the landscape. If a woman has starch masks. <laughs> no, I'm not going into that video. But as dark energy stir beneath the sand, sometimes that which was meant to remain dead does not. Crowlock walks the sands once again, blinded by rage and the endless agony of his dying moments. Woe to those who find themselves in the beast's path. Dune Gorgia Crowlock goes through periods of rapidly alternating casts of Sonic Bellow and Earth Spike. Avoid these attacks and press on to victory. When Dune Gorgia Crow Kraulok bellows. He picks a random player and locks his facing until he finishes. If spike damages anyone within two yards and knocks the victims up into the air, Ravenous Ranishu summoned through Shake Loose and Ravenous are Ravenous and will swing wildly. So that's a zombie dinosaur. There's a bug thing summoned by it. And loot. Back piece, leg piece, versatility trinket, and face strength proc. Okay, so finally, Lion's Roar. Now, this is a faction specific one. There's a, a Horde or Lion's version as well. The Lion's Roar is the pinnacle of the Alliance engineering. Built to dominate the battlefield, this asset can carry legions of troops and decimate enemy fortifications. When deployed onto the field, there is nothing that can stop this Behemoth's charge to victory. Well, except for 40 players. The Lion's Roar is a mobile war machine that switches in and out of a siege mode. While well, Siege, the demolisher cannon, must be avoided while dealing with the war machine soldiers. It will battlefield repair to stop the Lion's Roar from being healed. 
So that's a Lion's War. It's an Azerite War Machine. We've got Lion's Engineer. We've got Lion Shield Belder. Belder. Bearer. And you've got Lion's Warcaster. So if I hop on to the drone eye, I will take a look at the uh, Alliance version. What am I looking for? The raid. So the Horde, or the Alliance version, is Doom's Howl. Doom's Howl was created from stolen Alliance engineering plans. Used to transport hordes of troops into the worst combat situations, this gigantic vehicle can also transform into a powerful siege platform capable of decimating enemy fortifications. Doom's Howl is a mobile war machine that switches in and out of siege mode, while Siege, the demolisher cannon, must be avoided while dealing with the war machine soldiers. Into a battlefield prepare to stop the Doom's Howl from being healed. So, that is an Azerite War Machine for the Horde, and I believe Alliance players take this out in the Battle for Lord 1 scenario. We have the Engineers, which are Goblins, we have the Dread Shields, which are Orcs, and we have the Warcasters, which are Blood Elves. And he get, well, he gives Lions War Pauldrons, Polish Polish Shield Bearer's Breastplate, and a Strength Trinket with a Critical Strike use. I don't think I looked at the uh, loot for the Horde, did I? Okay, so shoulder, chest, and trinket. Shoulder, chest, and trinket. Shoulder, chest, and trinket. Shoulder, chest, and trinket. My dog is clawing me. Yes, I know you want to go walkie soon. Uh, I should have took you out about half an hour ago. But you've been asleep on my bed, so I've just left you. As is. So anyway, uh, shoulder, chest, and trinket, yeah. Okay, it's the exact same thing, just differently worded. 370, 370, 370, wait a minute. 355, 370. These are better. Interesting. Okie dokie. So, with that, that uh, that's the outdoor world bosses, so... One of these random six ones appear in one of the new six zones every week. And the Lion's Roar is in a Rafi Basin, which is the... Uh, that new mode. War mode or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, the only bit left is Old Deer. Let's see. Overview. Millennia ago, seeking to understand the nature of their eternal foe, the Titans constructed this sprawling underground facility to research and quarantine captured specimens. They hoped that by studying the void energy that bound the old gods, probing it for weaknesses and reactions, they could find some way to neutralize it. They were horribly, horribly wrong. The facility was sealed away, so that the horrors within would never be unleashed upon Azeroth. But now those seals have broken. So there are three seals in uh, Zandalar, one in each area, and yeah, they broke, or they will break. Fun times with that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bosses. And I guess if I take a look at the map, first we have Runes Descent, then we have Hall of Sanitation. Then we have Ring of Containment, which reminds me of ICC with all the different wards. We have Archives of Eternity. We have Plague Vault. We have Gallery of Failures. Okay. We have the Oblivion Door. And finally we have the Festering Gore, which houses Gahoon. So, first boss then. The Titan Keepers enacted countless systems to detect and contain any breach from the facility. Their most powerful construct, Talok, kept watch for any signs of corruption in the region and ruthlessly excised any lati found. But as thousands of years passed, its internal defences began to decay, making it vulnerable to corruption. 
Talok's blood-filled magic will flood the room with bloodstorms. His powerful cudgel of gore will absorb nearby bloodstorms. At 35% health, Talok's fuel spills into the arena, causing him to power down and spawn coalesced blood and volatile droplets. Volatile droplets will continue to spawn once Talok reabsorbs his fuel, cancelling power down and engaging the raid once more. Damage dealers avoid standing close to an ally targeted by Kuchel of Gore. Defeat volatile droplets before they can reach an ally and inflict combustible fuel. Avoid standing in front of Talok when he casts Sanguine Static. So you're a big robot titan keeper. Volatile droplet and coalesced blood. It's a recolored shaw. Lovely. And in terms of loot. Oh wow, the first part drops an item for me. Nice. <laughs> that one's a 340. 355. 370. 385. Okay, okay. That's interesting to know. It's going up in 15s. Well, even if I do Raid Finder, that is a damn good upgrade for me. Uh huh. So next is Mother. Well, dear's Titanic Watcher was gifted with tenacity and an insatiable desire to discover a solution to the old gods. Her protocols have remained fully intact even after many years. Even though of a. <laughs> Ugh, mean words. Her protocols have remained fully intact even though many of her systems in her facility have collapsed. Warning. M O T H E R. Will not accept aid from contaminated subjects. Pass through defense grids to reach the final chamber of the Hall of Sanitation. Reaching the third and final chamber cleanses the rate of all corruption and flicks Mother with depleted energy. Having expended immense energy cleansing the chambers of corruption, Mother takes 100% more damage while within the final room. When Mother is first active in any chamber, she will begin a countdown to activate Cleansing Purge within that chamber. Once a room has been purged, it inflicts 65,000 fire damage every one second. Dare I ask what that is on Mythic? 165 fire damage! <laughs> How much HP are we gonna have at this point? 122... 87... 87... Raid finder, please. Thank you. 65. Okay, let's put on normal, since that's probably my best bet of what I can do for the raid. Let's see... When Mother's first act of any chamber, she'll begin to count down. Yeah, I've read that one. Coordinate with your allies to pass through the defense grids. Avoid standing in front of Mother so as not to take damage from sanitizing strike. Interrupt clinging corruption cast by remnants of corruption. So that is Mother. That is a remnant of corruption. That is a resistant bacterium. And that is a vile contagion. And Mother gives me an Azerite Helmet, a Waist, and a Finger. Okay. Next is the Fetid Devourer. The experiments within Old Year conducted tests upon f countless life forms, including several lower who inhabited the forest around Zandalar. After the experiments proved lethal, the lower's remains were disposed of improperly. Much to the delight of the dark consciousness imprisoned within old deer. Okay. Periodically, waste disposal units around the room will activate, dumping waste into the room and leaving behind corruption corpuscles. Corpuscles. Corpuscles? I, I don't know how you say that. Players must kill these before they release the enticing essence of Veta Devour will move to them and consume corruption, healing, gaining energy. At 50%, a fetid devourer will enter into a fetid frenzy. Kill corruption cops healed before they finish re releasing enticing essence. When Chimera reaches 100 NG, prepare to avoid rotting regurgitation. So I'm going to assume these are like parts of lowers which have then combined into a Chimera or something? Yeah, it's creepy. And corruption corpse heal. Okay. 
loot, you give a back piece, and you give hands. Okay. Next is Zekvos, Herald of the Nazov. Shortly after the sundering, a dark messenger arrived on the fresh shores of Zandalar, intending to bring the newly isolated tribe into the service of Nazov. Zekvos was prepared to entice, bribe, cajole, corrupt, or simply kill them, but he was not prepared to encounter the defences of Aldir. He was captured, studied, disassembled, and stored in the Titan's archives, where he has waited for a chance to escape. Wait, wasn't he mentioned in a previous one? Uh, Temple of Sephiroth? Centuries ago, Sephiroth's powerful snake will sacrifice herself to stop Mifrax. No, that's a different one entirely. Okay. I was going to say, Mifrax is there. So we get to him eventually. So let's see, uh, Zekvos. Zekvos attacks players while the compromised Titan Discs come online, calling for powerful old god magics and summoning their lesser servants. As new Titan Discs come online, previously activated discs will power down. Keep a safe distance from your allies when I beam. The Eye of Kavoon penetrates the soul of the target. Is preparing to fire? Consider your positioning when ro rolling deceit or roiling deceit is about to expire. Yog Saron corrupts the target. Intercept Orb of Corruption to gain Corruption Corruptor's pack. Okay. So we haven't seen any Nazoff or. Uh, Did something change here? No. Maybe in abilities. Hmm. Let's see. Stage 1 Chaos. Chaos Protocols summoning projections of Gafoon. 65% Protocol Yelks of Ron. At 30% remaining, corruption begins. The magic released from the damaged Titan Discs appear to be unchecked and more than a mere demonstration of power. So nothing about uh, Nazoff or the other guy. Yasharj. Y Yasharj? I don't know how you say his name. <laughs> so that is Nazoff or Zekvos, servant of the old god, herald of the old god. Silver Warrior, no Ruby and Void Weaver. And that gets you, gets me, a leg piece, a feet piece, a ring, or a strength trinket with a shadow damage split among all targets in a cone effect. Okay. Next is Vecidus. The plague of corrupted blood killed countless trolls and began one of the most terrifying periods in Zandalar's history. The constructs within Aldea studied the disease in search of a cure, but found that only isolation and extermination was effective. Unfortunately, as the facility's safeguards were, as the facility's safeguards cracked apart, the plague was accidentally combined with a sample of Cahoon's blood, creating a new entity that hungered for fresh victims. Great. Vecus creates instances of Omega Factor, which bound endlessly between players during the encounter when Omega Factor j jumps. Between players, it leaves behind a stack of lingering infection, which has no duration and cannot be removed. Okay. Vectus will create multiple instances of Omega Factor at the beginning of the encounter. Kill Plague Amalgamations quickly to prevent excessive healing absorption from immunosuppression. Areas targeted by a Plague Bomb that detonate without players inside them will spawn an additional Plague Amalgam. Avoid area damage from targets affected by gestate. Communicate with your allies to control hosts for Mega Factor. Good luck doing that on LFR, my god. <laughs> Good luck. And Vectus is. a thing. It's a creepy thing. So let's see, loose. You give. a chest piece. Uh, and has a right chest piece, that's nice. You also give it back, and you give a strength trinket with a shadow damage proc. And also grants me a squiggle strike. Okay, that's interesting. 
So let's see, next we have... Big story spoiler, Zul Reborn. Once the proud Z leader of the Zanchuli Council, highest advisors to the kings of Zandalar, Zul was praised as the greatest of prophets. Now the Dark Prophet has turned on King Rastakhan and would see a true troll empire rule the world once again. Even if it means submitting to the blood god, Kuhun. Zul begins the encounter assisted by the forces of blood. He will continue to summon additional forces of blood that the party must contend with while his energy fills. At 40% health, Zul no longer summons the forces of blood and becomes fully empowered with the blood of Kuhun. Unleashing Locus of Corruption, spending his Elder Blood to afflict the rate of Corrupted Blood for the remainder of the encounter. Players must defeat him before the damage from Corrupted Blood overwhelms them, so that's like a soft enrage. Damage dealers move away from the party while afflicted by Dark Revelation. Dispelling Bound by Shadow for minions of Zul will instantly kill them! Oh, oh, that's killing their enemies! I thought that was players. Quickly kill the animated Ikors, Ikors, however you want to say it, summoned from Congeal Blood before they reach Zul. So that is Zul. He was apparently killed during the BFA story, but then he gets revived in a raid. Fun times. Nazmani Crusher, that is a giant woman. Nazmani Bloodhexer, that is a thin woman. And Bloodfusty Krog. It's a crag. <laughs> so let's see, next we have Mithrax the Unraveler. He was in the... Oh, he is in the... Uh, the desert area story. Yeah, when one guy in his Anchuli Council releases him. So let's see, Mithrax the Unraveler. Mithrax the Unraveler, bringer of Oblivion, slayer of Sephiralis. With his mission complete, he returns to his master's side to await further instruction. Mifrax's abilities will trigger Annihilation, reducing players' maximum health. Shit. When Annihilation triggers, there is a chance that an existent fragment, existence fragment will spawn, allowing players, player, player, or her allies, surely it should be their allies, to regain that previously lost maximum health. Move away from your allies when afflicted by imminent ruin. Avoid having multiple players charmed by the same Oblivion Sphere. Okay, so there's a charm. Shit. And that's... Once again, the creepy crab... Handed... Old God? Minion? You remind me of something. What do you remind me of? Oh, you remind me of... Uh... God, I can't think of a name, but it's one of the optional bosses in Bloodborne. Ebrietas, that one. So let's see, you have a two-handed sword, Voror gleaming, gleaming Blade of the Stalwart. That's actually not too bad on normal. That's not bad at all. Raid Finder is silver and purple. Normal's gold. Heroic is blue. And Mythic is red. Okay, then. Huh. Yeah, I do kind of like that, though. I'm not sure if I'll replace the transmog of the Ashbringer, but... I like it. <laughs> so, let's see, you drop a sword, you drop... Uh... <laughs> Chitin Spine. What does that look like? Nothing at all. <laughs> so, you give Azerite shoulders and a finger. Or, oh, technically a ring. I was going to say, did he actually give you the finger? No, it's a ring. Like I was in the finger slot. Hang on, shouldn't we be able to wield like ten rings at this point then? Blood elves have ten fingers! God, it would be like having the infinity stones. <laughs> so finally, the final boss of the raid, Kuhun. In Aldea, the Titans had hoped to find a solution to the Old Gods, but when they experimented upon the Old Gods' unending ravenous need to corrupt, they unexpectedly created a perfect avatar of that desire. Gahoon is nothing but rot, pestilence and decay, the ultimate parasite who cannot stop himself from consuming his host until it is gone. 
So they created an avatar of the old gods called Gohun. So it's not an old god, but it's an avatar. Or maybe it's like an artificial old god. I don't know. Blame the Titans. Gohun begins the encounter encased within the chambers of all, calling forth minions to assault his foes, to dislodge him from his lair. Uh, yeah, right, buddy. You just somehow made the piggy bank fall on you. <laughs> yes, I actually have one. So anyway, Gohun begins the encounter encased within the chambers of all, calling forth minions to assault his foes, to dislodge him from his lair. The orig the or the reorigination drive must be fully charged by dis depositing power matrices within it. Once active, Gahoon begins his assault in earnest. Gahoon can be stalled by continuing to power up the reorigination drive, causing reorigination blasts to weaken him. Upon reaching low health, Gahoon unleashes his might, destroying the, re the reorigination drive, preventing the use of reorigination blast. Damage dealers deposit power matrices to trigger a reorigination blast. Remember, Blood Feast can reset your stats of putrid blood. Face away from Gahoon when he casts Gaze of Gahoon. So I believe uh, the power matrices and the reorigination blast, it's kind of like playing uh, basketball. You have to pass the power matrices from player to player to player until you reach the bot, the, the bot, the spot you have to butt it in to trigger the blast. It's, it's an interesting mechanic. So that's Gahoon. It's creepy. It's a worm thing. It's creepy. Light spread a tentacle, a tendril, Cyclopean Terror, and Dark Young. So this is essentially that dungeon boss. From the Underrot. Yes, it's the exact same thing. <laughs> Whether they're actually related or not, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just using the same model. So let's see, uh, loot. Vanquish Tendril of Gahoon. Your ten your, <laughs> your tendrils. Your spells and abilities have a chance to call forth a Vanquish Tendril of Gahoon to serve you for 20 seconds. Honestly, I don't want that. You also drop feet, and you drop a Azerite Helmet. And on Mythic... Yeah, it's the same thing. Actually, I sworn Old Deer dropped a mount. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Do any of these guys drop mounts? <laughs> yeah, so the world drops, or well, the world bosses don't drop mounts this time. Okay. Okay, okay. So that is the raid. So that that is the raid, and then the world bosses for Battle for Azeroth patch 8.0. It, it feels kind of off to have only one, but I guess if I go back to Legion, the Emerald Nightmare was an eight, oh, was a 7.0 thing, and then. I think Trial of, Trial of Valor and the Night Hold got released in 7.1. So, I guess there's still uh, raids to come. So, yeah, these aren't the only ones. So, yeah, I think with that, I am done talking about everything in Legion. Oh, in the pre-patch. By the time this is uploaded, the f next week should have happened. So, the weekly reset and hopefully some... Quest lines for the Teldrassil story? Maybe? So, yeah. I guess without viewers, I will end this episode here. This has been Dragon of Eternity going through more World of Warcraft, Balfour's or free patch content. Well, not really content, but just me reading some of the new stuff that's been added. So, reading the Dungeon Journal. So, yeah, this episode I read the, I'd read the Dungeon Journal about the raids and... That's everything I can look at. Uh, well, I could always go to beta to do stuff, but... Uh, yeah, It's only like four or three weeks until Balfour's Well, if I can... I can just wait and experience the content live. Why not? So, yeah. With that done, with that said, 
with my rambling done. Until next time.